In this video, we're going to take a look at every type of fillet in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to do somewhat of a Fusion quick tip. I haven't really done these in a while, and this one's probably going to be a bit longer than quick, but I wanted to cover a topic about fillets. And specifically, I want to talk about every type of fillet that we have in Fusion 360. So if you want to follow along, you can download the design from the, the description of the video. And we've got two bodies in here. There's one that's a sort of crazy looking triangle thing that uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we've got this first body here that just has all sorts of different features on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the fillet tool. And we want to explore a couple of different things. First, we have type. We've got our fillet, our rule fillet, and full round fillet. We have this section here where we can add multiple radii fillets. We've got a radius type for constant, chord length, and variable. And then we also have some options for things like corner type for rolling ball and setback. So we're going to try to talk about all of these with these two different solid bodies. First, starting out with the standard fillet. Now, this one's pretty straightforward, and if you've made any designs in Fusion 360, you've likely used a standard fillet before. But there are some nuances that we want to consider whenever we're working with these standard fillet types. For example, if we select an edge and we begin dragging this, what we're doing is we're creating a constant radius fillet. Now, we'll talk about chord length in a little bit when we get to that sort of funky shaped triangle. But there are a couple of options, even with the constant radius type, that we do want to mention. So these designs are fairly prismatic. But if we have complex shapes, we can change from tangency to curvature. And you'll notice that as we zoom in, we go back and forth between tangent and curvature. There is a very slight difference to this. Now, the slight difference will change based on the angle of the fillet. So for example, if we go over here, where we've got slightly more than 90 degrees in this corner, when we go from tangent to curvature, it's going to have more of a change or more of an effect because the tangency angles are different than the traditional 90 degree corner we're used to applying fillets to. So that's one thing to keep in mind is the curvature type, tangency or curvature, will change the way in which the fillet is generated. Now, if you're using a standard, let's say a CNC machine with a ball end mill, you wanna stick with the tangency. Uh, it's gonna give you a consistent radius and that's gonna be what you're gonna end up machining with your tool. If you do the curvature continuity, it could get a little dicey. We're also going to take a look at hitting the add selection set. And what this allows us to do is pick another edge in our design and we can apply a different radii fillet out. In this case, you can see we added a five millimeter fillet to the bottom or root edge and a one and a half to the top. So the reason that this is kind of helpful and important is because now when we hit okay, we just have one fillet feature in the timeline. And that one fillet feature has two different radii fillets. So again, this can be helpful, especially if you're doing multiple fillets on a design, it can get a lot of features down here in this timeline that we want to avoid. So that was a basic sort of consistent radius fillet, probably what you're used to applying. But that is just selecting edges. If we happen to select a face, for example, and we begin dragging this, what we're going to get is a fillet applied to every edge that intersects that face. So if I hit control and hold that down, you can see now we're sort of blending this pocket up and out of the design. So if I move my way around holding down control or command, this is a quick way for us to fill it everything. Now we can also use things like box selection. So if I cancel that and I just drag a box here, you can see that it's grabbing the edges and we can use things like our selection tools and priorities to determine whether or not we wanna select faces or edges, for example. So if we clear this out and we do a box selection, anytime we go from bottom right to top left, anything that the box touches will be in our selection set. If we go from top left to bottom right, anything that's completely within that is going to be included in our selection set. Uh, if you hold down control, we can add or remove. If you hold down shift, we can add to the selection set. So once again, you need to make sure that you are comfortable with these tools and playing around with things like selection sets and selection priorities. You'll notice here, we're gonna do select all body edges and just go back to that sort of default setting. So once again, selecting a face or a set of faces is going to create that same kind of constant radius fillet, 
along all the edges that that face intersects. There's another thing that we do want to talk about. So we're going to say, okay, and create yet another fillet. And that's going to be what happens when we have three corners that intersect. So as I start to drag this down, we can see that we get this sort of triangular ball shape in the corner. And that's what this corner type is. If we go to setback, then it creates more of a blended corner between those edges. Now, this is going to be true if it is an internal or an external corner. So keep in mind that if you're using these options, setback and rolling ball, if you are going to be, say, machining this with a ball end mill or a bullnose mill, then you probably want to stick to the traditional rolling ball when it's an internal corner. When you're using external corners like up here, the setback option is probably going to be okay because you're going to be using more of a 3D toolpath on the outside. So keep in mind that those things are important when you start to produce these different types of geometries. You have to think about how you're going to manufacture it. So that's a couple of different fillets that we've looked at so far. If we go back to our fillet dialog, if we go to our type dropdown, we have something called a rule fillet. Now rule fillet is a little bit tricky. I'm gonna zoom out for this one. Now what this allows us to do is select faces or features. And the face selection is honestly not as useful as the feature selection is. And I'll show you why in just a second. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to make a selection and then I'm gonna add a one millimeter fillet here just so we can see what happens. So what ends up happening with the face, with the rule fillet is similar to just selecting a face if we were using the standard fillet and it kind of gives us the same result. However, if we use the feature option and I select, let's say this feature pattern and the original sort of um, feature that was used to create that, now we can determine whether or not we want those to be rounds and fillets full rounds or fillets only. And what this does, this allows us to make fillets for a grouping of features, in this case, a pattern. So if we didn't have that, the way that we would have to go about that is by using some trickery, by doing things like rotating to the side. I'm gonna double click the mouse wheel to bring this back. Rotating to the side and using our selection dialog to have edge selection priority and then we would do something like a box selection inside of here to get all the edges on the inside. And, and that's honestly, it's a little bit trickier. It's something I don't really like to do. So I like to just use those tools such as our feature fillet or a fillet using those rules. So that is a look at our rule fillet. We've also looked at our standard fillet. We haven't talked about our cord length just yet, but we will get to that. But I do wanna mention the variable fillet. This is kind of a cool one and most CAD programs do have this. I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit. Now what the variable fillet allows us to do is determine a fillet radius based on a position along an edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, at the start of this, it's gonna be zero millimeters. At that point I just clicked, it's gonna be one millimeter. And then at the very end, we're gonna go all the way out to five millimeters. So this allows us to go from no fillet to a variable fillet as we go along that edge. And we can add additional points if we want to, changing this. And we can determine, let's say maybe at the beginning, we want that to be five, and we want it to sort of taper down to two millimeters in the middle and then taper back out to five. This dialogue is always in the way. So that's a kind of a, a nice way to create that variable shape without having to do too much work. Now, again, you have to think about things like manufacture. How are you going to make this? And is the geometry going to be problematic? So let's create yet another fillet. And this time we're gonna take a look at the full round fillet. Now, this one is pretty interesting as well, and it works better in some instances over others. So for example, this little block on the top, if I click that, what it's going to do is it's going to take those three faces and it's gonna create geometry that'll be perfectly round. So essentially, if you think about creating a sketch, you would use a, a half arc in this case, or an arc that's half a circle. And that would create the geometry for you. Now, if that doesn't happen to work, sometimes you have to select additional sides to make that work. But for the most part, it's actually done a pretty good job for me creating those full round fillets. 
Okay, so now that we've explored most of those basic fillets, let's talk about the last one here, which is chord length, and it's a little bit harder to understand. So I've got this sort of funky triangular loft thing here. And the reason I have this is because the chord length is going to be very apparent on certain types of geometry. So if we add a fillet, and let's say we're using the standard fillet, which is a um, constant radius, when we select an edge and we begin dragging that fillet, for the most part, this is what you would expect to see. However, when we get to a situation where we've got some sort of varying degrees of angles between faces, especially down here, what you're going to see is that as the angle changes, so does the width of your fillet. Now, in some cases, it'll be more drastic than others, especially as the size varies. We can really see that it's wider here at this steeper intersection, and it's narrow here where the angle between those edges is wider. And again, that's true down here as well. So the reason that we would want to go from a constant radius to a chord length is now we can drive the length of the radius independent of the angle between the faces. So instead of saying we want a 35 millimeter fillet, we can say that we want the chord length to be 35 millimeters. Now, the reason that this is important is because now we're driving the width of the fillet as opposed to driving the radius of it. The radius is going to be variable as we go along these edges because the angle of the faces that are adjacent to them are variable. So that is really all of the different types of fillets that we have. You can, of course, apply them to surfaces as well, and it's going to be the same tool. There are some nuances to doing surfaces as opposed to solids, like they have to be stitched together as one surface body. But for the most part, that's going to be an overall look of applying a standard fillet with both the constant radius and chord length or the variable option, as well as a rule fillet, which will allow you to add fillets to features. So for example, internal corners against a featured pattern. And then the full round fillet, which lets us do a face selection and create a full round fillet on that face. If you have any questions on these or any other feature, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.